Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. Hi, and welcome to episode six of the Arm Your Mind for Liberty podcast and video blog. My name is George Donnelly. I'm your host. Today, the topic is private prisons and libertarianism. Do they go together? Uh, my friend, and um, I really respect this guy. His name is Carlos Miller. Um, he asked a question on Facebook um, just yesterday, I think. He says, okay, libertarians, here's a question for you. Do you believe private prisons should replace government-owned prisons when their sole motive is to profit from people's loss of liberty? What an ex excellent question. Because we do have some people in uh, the liberty community who, um, you know, as I mentioned in the previous episode, they're maybe minarchists or uh, they otherwise enjoy uh, their good old slice of government. And they may be in favor of privatization, a terrible, ugly word that you should strike from your vocabulary uh, that I've mentioned in earlier episodes. Because basically privatization is taking a government function, putting it into the hands of corporations, giving them the freedom to do whatever they like, but without the responsibility, because they still enjoy the protections that come from uh, government aggression, which basically uh, damages the, the, ba the liberty responsibility balance that um, is inherent uh, whenever you know, any uh, private individual goes out and do some does something. You know? I can go out and I can throw rocks around that may be um, part of my liberty, uh, but if I break somebody's window, well, um, the balancing, the part that balances that, is that I have a responsibility to uh, make the owner of that window whole by paying him or getting him a new window or otherwise uh, coming to some mutual agreement to uh, fix the, the harm uh, that I created. So when we privatize, well, not we, but when the government privatizes something like a prison, um, they are giving the liberty to the private corporation, but they are not handing over the responsibility. And so we get all kinds of nasty, terrible abuses of government power when there's privatization. Uh, one example of this, which is a piece of bad news that I, I don't want to go on about too long because I don't like to focus on the bad news, I like to focus on the solutions, is a uh, recent article just a few days ago that I found at thecompassionchronicles.com. Um, and basically it's about a prison, a uh, sheriff, a county jail, uh, Live Oak County Jail in uh, Texas, somewhere in Texas, where um, they, uh, male guards were guarding uh, female inmates. And they repeatedly, according to the article, repeatedly raped and humiliated female inmates over an extended period of time. Um, you can uh, find this article, if you're interested in it, by Googling Texas Rape Camp Detail Page. Um, and it's, it's not a very pleasant article to read. Um, it is really quite upsetting to see um, what, these, what these people did to these women. I think prison is an inherently broken uh, medium for, uh, you know, ostensibly the idea is to protect society from uh, people who are at risk for, for hurting others. The problem is that, uh, and I've been in prison, not for a long time, just a couple days, um, and basically you take all power away from the individual, all their things, their clothes, and you put them into a cage, concrete and metal cage. And um, basically, I mean, you're stripping everything away from the person. Um, and you put people into close quarters. It's inevitable that there's going to be fighting in there. And you put a few individuals, you give a few individuals, privileged individuals, um, complete power, unaccountable power um, over these powerless people. There's no checks here. Now, you might say there are, there are supervisors, there are video cameras, but um, you know, police and prison guards and whatnot have shown that they will collude among, amongst each other to shut down the, um, you know, the accountability options and to keep their their brothers safe from uh, prosecution. Um, you know, I, I could 
go on and on about all the examples of how that happens. And just the fact that this, in this case, it went on for so long, uh, should really um, make you pause. Uh, a this a prison is an example of a um, you know a very authoritarian environment, and it's broken. It's broken. All, I think all of us have this weakness. You know, the um, there were some. Uh, uh, Stanley Milgram did some experiments at Stanford University some decades ago that showed how even uh, you know your regular Joe off the street will um, will quickly uh, the you know unlimited power will quickly go to his his or her head and it'll start hurting people. You can look up the Milgram prison experiments. I think they were called. Prison is inherently broken. Yeah, and absolutely the current uh, government prisons as well as private prisons are an absolute disgrace. It's a form of torture. Uh, you know, here's an article from The Guardian uh, just uh, about a week ago uh, about how America's private prison system is a national disgrace. Flagrant abuses at a private correctional facility in Mississippi that the ACLU is um, suing. Um, and in some, you know, in, it, it's not just the abuse, it's the exploitation. It's a new form of slavery. And uh, some of these places... They hire out um, prisoners as extremely cheap labor, well below the minimum wage, to corporations who make them produce, have them produce things like uh, license plates and even uh, consumer products. And you know, you could say, well, the prisoner has a choice, you know, about whether to, um, you know, participate in these uh, work schemes where they get paid pennies, really. But the fact is, um, you know, that choice is because the, the word choice, the meaning becomes a little bit perverted when you put somebody in a cage and you treat them like crap, and um, you know, you use your power to force them into these uh, these schemes, these slavery schemes, modern slavery, uh, because there's really no choice at all. You know, if you can get a short break from um, you know being in in this in this in this cage and. And if you can get certain special privileges, you know, which are even below what you and I take for granted, but are better than being locked in a cage with crap to eat all day long and at the mercy of, um, you know, the, the worst and the most violent, uh, who wouldn't take advantage of that? Anybody would. But you, can, you can't hardly say that it's voluntary. So uh, government prisons suck. Private prisons in the United States are unacceptable. They're a disgrace. And frankly, the whole concept of prison is broken. It doesn't work. It doesn't help anybody. They're just training centers for people to engage, to become better at engaging in crime. And I can hardly blame them, uh, frankly. Um, you know, even though crime is, um, you know, if it's real crime against people or property, it's absolutely unacceptable and disgusting. And, um, you know, but, you know, you can kind of understand sometimes where it comes from. So I think in a libertarian society, um, First of all, uh, there would be a lot of things that simply would not be illegal, uh, like growing marijuana or consuming uh, cocaine, uh, where you know a huge percentage of the people in, in federal prison uh, today are there for victimless uh, drug-related crimes. And second of all, the really violent people, there, there could be a couple options. Uh, one could be uh, house arrest. Um, another could be exile. You uh, just throw them out into uh, the wild, into nature or whatever. Um, and they could have the choice of which one they would prefer, whether the, the you know, house arrest or, or exile. Um, and, um, you know, just let them, them, let them find their own way. But, um, you know, I think the current paradigm of prison should be reserved only for the most extreme cases, if that. You know, and I, I personally I question just how much, how uh, necessary it is even for the extreme cases. But it's broken. And as a libertarian, I don't support prison at all. Um, I, I don't think, you know, I, I don't think there should be an institution of prison. And um, like I said, you know, people should be given an option of exile or um, house arrest and, um, you know, any, the, the approaching, you know, a cage really should be reserved for the most extreme uh, cases where um, people have repeatedly uh, committed uh, crimes against persons or, or, or property of an extreme nature, and they have flouted uh, house arrest rules. That's about it. You know, and for those of you who may think that, you know, prison, you know, they, we, have, we have a concept, um, 
you know, a dichotomy really in, in between the good people and the criminals, you know. And if somebody labels you a criminal, he's a criminal. Well, that seems to uh, justify just about anything. Just about anything. I mean, look what they're doing to the people in uh, Guantanamo Bay. We need to overcome that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think libertarians should be for prison. I think we should recognize that it is a broken concept. Uh, thanks for listening. That's the end of the uh, podcast uh, version for this week. And uh, have a great day. Get protected today at shieldmutual.com.